Cannonball! Hey everybody, how's it going? So it's tutorial Sunday, or is it Monday today? I'm pretty sure it's Sunday. I lose track of the days, I can't keep up. Have you ever wished you could take better pictures of your horses? I definitely have. So I've watched a million YouTube tutorials. I've taken a million pictures of my horses. And today I'm gonna to go over what camera I use and what are some of my settings. I'm gonna to try to get you guys off the automatic modes and into some of the more manual settings because it's totally worth it. Takes way better pictures and you're gonna love it. Let's get out of here. Let's roll. Be with my crew, just give me the rock, G. I float like a butterfly and kick like karate. I scored 26, I caught a Vic and now I'm out. I'm taking it to the... This is the camera I use. It's a Panasonic GH4. And I absolutely love it. The pictures it takes, I'm super happy with the pictures. And the video is incredible. It shoots 4K. I can shoot up to 96 frames per second in full high definition, which is a really high frame rate for video. I just love this camera. So this is the lens I use to shoot most of my pictures. It's a Lumix G Vario 2.8. So, and it's a 35 millimeter to 100 millimeter zoom lens so this lens can sort of zoom in and out and it also has the power ois which is like the image stabilization system built into the lens so if i flick that on which it always is then the lens itself will sort of automatically help stabilize some of my shots which is a really nice feature on the top of your camera you'll see a dial generally you'll see an a which stands for aperture You'll see an S, which stands for shutter, and you'll see an M, which stands for full-on manual mode. These are the three sort of settings that are the most important and you're gonna wanna focus on. So let's start with the shutter priority mode, the S. Most of the time I am shooting on shutter mode, so the S mode. And that allows me to sort of manually control the shutter speed. The higher the number in terms of shutter speed, so say your shutter speed could be 2500 for example, that means the shutter is gonna be opening and closing very quickly, like it's very fast. So that means you're gonna be able to get like a really crisp shot even if there's a lot of action. So if the horse is like galloping by you, there's a pretty good chance your shot is gonna be very, crisp and clean. The downside to that is that you require a lot of light. So the faster the shutter goes, the more light is required to get like those a really nice clear shot. So for me, I generally like to shoot at at least 500 and preferably up to like even like 15, 1600 if there's enough light outside. So the next mode is aperture mode and I'll Often when I'm filming on my camera, I pay particular attention to the aperture setting. And so the lower the aperture setting, so say on my particular lens, it can go to 2.8. So the lower that number is, the more shallow my depth of field will be. So depth of field is, you know in the movies, like a cinematic movie, where the actor's face is like really crisp and in focus and literally five feet behind the actor, it's like blurry and faded out. That's because they're shooting with a really shallow depth of field, which means there's not a lot of area that's in focus. Like the focal area is shallow. So there'll only be maybe like this much space that's in focus and then anything in front of or behind it is blurry. So you can get some really cool effects. It's a very cinematic look. The higher the number that you set your aperture mode, the greater the depth of field. So on this particular lens, I think it goes to 22. So if I roll it all the way up to the number 22, it means I'm gonna have a super wide depth of field. My head is in focus right now, for example, maybe 20 feet behind me is also going to be in focus and 20 feet in front of me is also going to be in focus. So the depth of field is going to be quite large. So another important setting is white balance. And 
You can ask my buddy Joseph. He always teases me about white balance because I may have forgotten to adjust the white balance on some crucial shots. So I'm paranoid now about white balance and it's something I definitely look into. So my camera has the white balance adjustment on the back or it's actually on the top of my camera. And so my, my camera has a white balance button on the top of the camera. I'm sure yours will be um, also somewhere visible. And there's generally a few settings. There's usually automatic, sunny, cloudy, shady, indoor lighting, and maybe a few custom settings. And I generally have mine set depending on what day it is. Like if I am shooting inside, I'll generally set it to the to the indoor lighting mode. And if I'm shooting outside and it's sunny, uh, sunny I will shoot it to the sunny mode. So I do definitely pay particular attention because if you have it on the wrong mode, it can affect the pictures and video. Next thing you want to look at is this ISO button on the top. It will change again sort of how much light is being let into the camera. So if you turn your ISO really high up, like to a high number, such as say 3200, it'll let a lot of um, more light into the camera, but with that, you will also get graininess. So graininess is generally to be avoided at all times. So the higher that number is, the more grain you're going to get. For myself, I generally don't like to shoot higher than 800. I find anything higher than 800 on my particular camera and the pictures have grain in them, which I don't like. So I generally try to set my ISO setting at between 2 and 800, depending on the lighting conditions. Again, if you have lots of light outside, then you can set the ISO number lower and you'll have a lot crispier, cleaner, and sharper images. So to recap what settings I have, I check my white balance and depending on the nature of where I'm shooting, I adjust accordingly. My ISO, I set between two and 800. I generally try to shoot on shutter priority mode and I love to be able to shoot between 500 and like 1500 sometimes even 2000 if it's very light outside so I hope that helps you guys definitely experiment with your camera it's super fun I know it's frustrating at the start I was there too before. It was really annoying. I felt totally overwhelmed. There's all these buttons, nothing makes sense. And you can go out and shoot a bunch of photos and come back to the computer, plug in your card and everything's blurry and it's, oh. But the more you practice, the better you're gonna get. So definitely practice, play around with it because getting off that automatic mode and playing with some of these settings is gonna make a huge, huge difference in your pictures. I hope that helps. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Solo shirt. Oh yeah.